All right. Uh, I'd like to call to order the 6.30 uh, planning board meeting for this evening, January 19th, uh, 2023. Uh, and let's go ahead and rise for the Pledge of Allegiance, please. <coughs> I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Well, good evening. I would like to first introduce our planning board members. To my left is Mr. Jerry Grable, uh, myself, uh, acting chair and uh, normally vice chair, Phil Roy. Uh, to my right, Dan Ganarelli, uh, CJ Haldet, Halad Haldet, okay. And via Zoom, we have Paul Amatucci and Matt Henry. Gentlemen, thank you for your time. Uh, so we'll go ahead and open the first public comment. Uh, I know last time it was, it was somewhat contentious, so I just want to reiterate the uh, planning board rules of engagement for uh, public hearings. Uh, we ask that you come up to the podium. Please speak clearly and into the microphone. If you don't speak into the microphone, they can't hear you out in uh, television land and it will not make it to the recording, okay? So please step up to the mic. Uh, each person uh, will be allotted five minutes to speak. If you would like to come up for a second round, you'll be allotted uh, a second round at two minutes for further comment. Three minutes. So, or three minutes. Thank you, Dave. Appreciate that. Um, at this time, we'll go ahead and we will open the public comment. Um, do you want me to quick, do a quick presentation before? Just so uh, yes, please, please if you could. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Thank you. Yes, sir. Thanks, Neil. And, Neil, you're going to answer the questions that you got over the last two plus weeks. Yeah, and I think, I think yeah, there, there weren't many as far as, as far as review comments, but I will address everything that, uh, that, is, that has come my way at least. So. Take six minutes. So uh, my name is Neil Raposa. I'm a civil consultant uh, here on behalf of Pine Hill Realty um, for this uh, residential um, development that sits between uh, Pine Hill Road and Cemetery Road. Uh, I'll take this and just walk to the walk to the plan and, and indicate what's been done since the uh, since the last meeting. I brought the full set for presentation in case anyone wants has any questions on any of the other sheets here. So, um, I did just want to clarify on this one. I think there was uh, some misunderstanding at the at the last meeting. Um, the The development that's shown here, uh, this takes up all the density for uh, everything right up to these two lots that are split off the end and Cemetery Road. So nothing uh, can be built at all from this line all the way down to here. Uh, in order to, to uh, utilize this land and get this many units uh, up front here, so I think I think that was I think that was a little uh, confusing because there was a label over here that said ten units, and that's not that doesn't indicate a future ten units here. That that means this whole piece is needed to get these ten units in here. So here is the uh, the ten unit condo development. Um, there haven't been uh, too many changes since the uh, since the last meeting. Uh, what we did do is we uh, pulled up the driveway uh, to go slightly uh, further north on Pine Hill uh, to allow the the outgoing lane here to have its lights shine uh, towards uh, you know the other side of of this property, uh, so it would be uh, pointing more towards that kind of the end of the garage instead of pointing uh, right at the main house. Uh, so we were able to do that. Uh, we uh, redid the, the site distances. Uh, it didn't change uh, going downhill, uh, going up the hill. It reduced it by uh, 10 feet to 580 feet, which is still well over the 350, I believe it is, for, uh, for, this, for this road at this speed. Um, we did adjust the, uh, the, the property line of the uh, private way that we're building so we could keep that, keep that driveway uh, 10 feet off of the property line. So we, we kicked that over and adjusted our plans to accommodate that. Um, beyond that, we haven't made uh, any changes to this plan beyond uh, some uh, things that were requested by Lee J. There was a note that had been uh, left off one of the plans uh, with regard to who's owning that right of way. Uh, so we added that to the plan. 
Um, and there were some just small housekeeping things like that. Um, the one thing we don't have specifically addressed on this plan uh, since the last meeting is what is going to be requested for screening or fencing uh, at this property line. Uh, we would like to take input on that to see what uh, what one the abutters request and what code enforcement ends up uh, determining that that, uh, that that should be uh, you know to separate these uses the the applicants willing to put whatever you know, whatever uh, separation there is required so I think the rest I'd, I'd love to hear your comments and uh, address them after If anybody would like to come up for public first public comment. So my name's Heather English. I'm at 159 Pine Hill Road. We actually, um, the abutters got together since the last meeting, and we compiled a document that we hope has everybody's comments in it so there would be less. No no one really knew what was going to happen at the meeting last, week, last time, so I feel like we all were kind of, you know, confused. So we did this document together, and I mean, anyway. So the first thing is, and I know he just addressed a couple things, but I want to just read everything that's on our document. So Mary, who was here last time, who lives on Cemetery Road, was concerned about the water runoff onto her property because she's already having water that's going into her, her garage, and so she was worried about going into her basement. So we just want to make sure that that issue is not going to... Um, become more because of this complex. We know that there is a water system in place, but if she were to have issues that, you know, she has a, a recourse for that. Um, historic rock walls must not be touched or altered, but buffer vegetation must be planted and maintained so that the aesthetics and tranquility of the surrounding properties are maintained. Um, the proposed road into the complex faces the living area of Chris's house, this you already talked about, but will cause headlights to flood his living room. If it could be shifted to the right, cause the headlights to point into his garage, which is much more tolerable. The access area running along the rock wall can never be paved, nor used as an access road. Uh, access to the back properties must be from Cemetery Road. Bamboo has been found on this lot and is an extremely invasive species. It has been isolated by the previous resident and not found on any surrounding properties. This must continue and Pine Hill, Pine Hill Realty would be responsible for removing the bamboo if construction or lack of maintenance caused it to migrate onto adjacent properties. Um, lot one will always be a single family residence, not split into apartments that would increase traffic flow nor torn down in townhouses or condos built. It's zoned right now, I think, that way anyway, but, um, you know, we just kind of wanted to make sure. Um, we, we do feel strongly about additional traffic on Pine Hill Road in a bend that's already problematic, um, but that was kind of talked to death last time, so just wanted to make sure it was mentioned. The 30-foot utility easement that runs along the entire rock wall from Pine Hill to Cemetery, and I do have a copy of this too, like I can give you guys a copy because I know I see you all furiously writing, but um, is it the intent to dig 15 feet from the rock wall? We want to make sure the rock wall itself and trees along are not damaged or destroyed and confirm that you will maintain and cut easement and not let it grow wild. Sufficient conifers and deciduous trees between the unit's back patio area and 160 Pine Hill for privacy. If trees die or are eaten by wildlife, they will be replaced. Extend the rock wall or install the fence, not chain link, an area where it's missing to provide boundary. That's missing from the end of lot two through lot three and part of lot four. To, for the parking lot, uh, minimal lighting at night so that it's not gonna flood the area with light. The wetland area that's just below the parking lot. We want to make sure there's no restriction on the water flow because there's a path, there's a water flow path from 160 Pine Hill Road. Um, stone markers to be put on lot boundaries. Cannot change the use of lot number two beyond proposed, and you said that already, that it's all, this is already going to be taken into account. And then there's just one question. Does the 30-foot utility easement have the same restrictions as a right-of-way setbacks? Do you want me to give you guys a copy of this, or did you all take your own notes? If you have an extra copy, yeah, that would be wonderful. Great. Thank you. Maybe one for 
Lynn Keisker, K-E-I-S-K-E-R. Um, one initial comment, I looked at the minutes from the last meeting, and for some reason, uh, my husband's name is written as Craig Hurd, and my name is written as Teresa Hurd, and I'm not sure why that is, but um, it's Craig Keisker and Lynn Keisker. Um, a couple other things that just before we came down, we were, my husband and I were talking, there were a couple other things, and we saw... Um, that they're going to be putting a dumpster apparently in, and I couldn't tell. It doesn't say where the dumpster is going to be, how often. I mean, I know that right now they may not know how often it's going to be emptied, but it needs to. We want to make sure. Is it going to be down in that parking area, which is right adjacent to our property? How often we want to make sure it's cleaned up timely, you know, um, so that it doesn't become a mess. Um, also, when we were here last time, we asked about how many bedrooms in the units, and we were told that there are expected to be two bedrooms. But on the information that I we were looking at, it says um, that the project as proposed to accommodate 30 bedrooms. So, I mean, it should be 20, not 30. I don't know. I mean, that's not what we were told, I guess. We were told it would be two, but now they're saying 30 bedrooms, which sounds like three bedrooms. So. Um, that's a point that we'd like to, you know, find out a little bit more information about. Um, uh, the cemetery road, there was also something in there about not intending on putting a road. I think this was in the um, revised impact traffic analysis. Um, and I think the verbiage is just kind of odd. I mean, it's just two entrances for two separate lots. And I, there shouldn't be a road being put in there anyway. It just didn't, it, the verbiage was just kind of different. Um, that's all that I had. I guess I did have a little question about when you first started, when you said that last meeting was contentious and that we had timed responses this time. Um, I, why is that changed and who allows that and how do you guys because I mean last time we did have a lot of questions it was our initial meeting this is the first time that a lot of us have been here and done anything like this and a lot of it's new to us I mean and it's affecting our lives and where we live so Absolutely. I don't think that that you know that what we did was wrong in any way that's I, for I sure to, and it was not my intent to imply that anybody did anything wrong change is always difficult and, and it does, th this is the process of how things are handled with the so town. So who, who and that, decides, but that, like, timing and stuff so like that? So that is voted on <laughs> by the board and, and by the selectmen. So we do have a policy um, that, and I know that sometimes when, when we do have contentious items that come before the board, that there is a certain amount of leniency that is given because we're here to serve you guys. Our, without you guys, we don't have a job, all right? That's right. And, it, and it's the best interest <laughs> of, it, and, and it's an, it, it's not a well-paying job. It doesn't pay at all. We're all no, volunteers. I, I understand. I don't so know how you guys do just, it. <laughs> just to be clear, um, we have your best interest at heart, but we also have to balance that with what is legal within the confines of laws and rules that are voted on by the town, um, and that's where the, the public hearing procedure comes from. That is actually voted on and approved by the Board of Selectmen. Um, and we can provide you a copy of that. But, uh, and, I, and I think a lot of times we, we end up being a lot more lenient because uh, this is pretty cut and dry, left, left and right end limits. And we, we, we want to hear from you. That's all that I have right now. <clears throat> <clears throat> Good evening, gentlemen. Um, my name is John. I uh, John Uzzle from 159 Pine Hill Road. How do you spell your last name, sir? U Z Z L E. Thank you. Not a problem. Um, I think there was because I don't have the the actual map in front of me to to go through everything. I was just curious 
um, as to, yep, sorry, I was just curious to the snow storage and, and so forth with removal and everything. Um, I know, because we, we walk through the, the trailer park a lot and there's, there's definitely a snow storage issue and I was just wondering what that's going to be like with this, with this project. That's pretty much all I got. Thanks. Thank you, sir. Craig Keisker, 160 Pine Hill Road. Um, I, we read in this about how uh, I believe civil consultants talks with the uh, talk with the superintendent and also our town supervisor. Somehow they cut a deal where only twice a year they the school gives us uh, whether they can take more whatever the they do they fill out a form and because as we read before we had read that today uh, this in, in any development I'll just I'll start picking on this one bigger one smaller one uh, it was interesting to learn that they have to have 20 percent capacity in our classrooms no way we're building little houses out of them we voted down building the last school. You know, I mean, I'll bet, you know, money that I can go to the superintendent right now and they're not going to tell me they have 20% capacity in the classroom. And even if this doesn't weigh a factor tonight, I would like to see this, you know, you group of people here start really making them write down each year. So you, at this six-month interval, when the superintendent brings, you can say what the cost and effect was for all the permits you wrote during that time because you were binded by law and had to do what your job is. I'm not trying to be personal about it, but I think that number as we plan for the future and do things is incredibly important. And I think, I, I don't think you do it, right? Now, that, that those, we don't add it up. We don't have a number on each project of, that, of this proposed, whatever it is, 10 students or whatever they're estimating that we don't end up with, you know, two kids in a room and, you know, uh, whatever in these places and get a few more or whatever uh, and it's not just schools it, it's everything so they ask for a written thing from your water from your sewer and I understand they speak but uh, is it you guys that agree or the superintendent and the town supervisor cut the deal on every six months instead of I mean, we pay a lot for a school district. If we need an answer, we should be able to get it at any time, right? We we we'll truly to go to, to any. We'll be able to speak to that later, and we have some hard data that we can provide you that that shows the, uh, and, and it's actually it was. I don't know the right term, but it was surprising to me to see that we actually had a drop off in school attendance, and with the influx of adding new residents and new building permits, we're actually at. Uh, still below capacity. So, but we'll provide you that information in the, the next comment section, sir. With the twenty percent, or with capacity at the level that uh, I can. Let they, Mr. you guys speak rules. To that, we read the twenty percent, and this isn't a number I came up with or yes, anything. Sir. This was in your literature. Mm -hmm. Okay. The other thing is, <laughs> and I, it's a lot of it's because of bamboo. When they sell everything. Who's responsible then, and how do I get hold of them if bamboo starts creeping over the property? You know what I mean? I mean, is there any way you guys can give me insurance that way or anything? I mean, it's on the property. And, you know, we all know what bamboo does. And uh, I really would like to know how that is guaranteed that uh, these people can come in, develop our land, leave our town, and leave behind whatever they want. And uh, and then I still, as I asked you last time, and they said, I, I just don't understand the rules on e easements and setbacks and the 30 feet and, uh, and how far, and whether that land is like a right of way, it shouldn't be counted in overall square footage for uh, developable land. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Anyone else for public comment? Okay, uh, let's see. Okay. Uh, approval of minutes from Excuse the January. Oh, go ahead, Dean. 
Are you going to you're going to close the public comment? Uh, uh, the yes, public sir. hearing. Yes, sir. At this time, we'll close the public hearing. Uh, and the next item, uh, approval of minutes for January fifth, twenty twenty two. I make a motion that we approve the minutes for January um, 5th, 2022, or 2023, excuse me. I'll second that. All right, so we have a motion. Uh, I will abstain from voting because I was not present, so you're, you are a yes? Yes. Yes? Yes. Yes. Uh, Paul? I abstained. I was not here. Okay, excellent. And uh, Matt? I Matt is I a yes. Yep. Okay. Uh, we will accept the planning board minutes as drafted. All right, and old business, preliminary major subdivision, map 36, lot 38, the Berwicks, Pine Hill Road, and Cemetery Road Civil Consultants. Oh, we got Neil Raposa, Civil Consultants. Um, I don't know if you want me to run through every question that the public brought up or if you had specific ones you wanted me to focus on or how, however you want to. I believe there's some that are already were already addressed. So the ones that you have already addressed, um, I, I think you could uh, pass though those because you brought those up in your opening statement um, but to the others that were not addressed do you have the list that, I have, that yes, was provided? I a copy of the list. Yeah, yeah if you could speak to each of those items that that would be great okay um, and if I if there's one that I that I say I've addressed and you don't think I've adequately addressed just stop me and I'll, I'll go right back to thank you sir okay so one uh, the water running into Mary's lot uh, we did uh, I tried to address that with the initial design, uh, super elevating that road and trying to get everything <clears throat> back into the property so we could control it and get it down to that uh, level spreader near the wetland and attempt to avoid getting any water through the site to her property. So theoretically, we should be improving her situation uh, that she's dealing with currently. Uh, the historic rock wall uh, must not be touched or altered. Uh, that's, uh, that's kind of a given for anything that's abutting between, you know, between abutting properties uh, we won't be impacting that except for any kind of, uh, you know, clearing of the vegetation there that needs to be done uh, to clean it up to, to either install the new vegetation or new landscaping uh, or to get any of the grading that we need done in there. But the rock walls themselves, um, yeah, we, we're not really allowed to impact any of the rock walls since it's, it's, they're generally property line markers. So. Um, the road in the complex uh, facing Chris's house. Uh, and that one we did uh, we did put quite a bit of effort into into moving that that roadway and getting over as far as we could uh, and still make uh, and still make the entrance and the and the uh, the private right of way work in there and we were able to move it over uh, just a little over ten feet uh, so now it's it's uh, it's faced at an angle away from the house and it's towards the garage so uh, I think it will be a much better uh, situation and i'm 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 glad they brought that up because that's something we wouldn't want to and we wouldn't want to build it and see that, you know, a year into the future and have it be an issue. So, um, access area running along the rock wall never be paved. Uses an access road, and that one we did. Uh, we discussed at the last meeting because we're maxed out at our coverage right now, so we we wouldn't be able to pave it even if we wanted to. It, it would be uh, against the DEP permitting. So, um, the bamboo on the lot um, that it's something that could be <coughs> written into. Uh, the condo documents that you know, uh, you know, any any growth that was uh, beyond the landscaping shown on the plans would need to be uh, trimmed and maintained. Uh, once you have a condo document and you have something that has to be adhered to, uh, you'll have you know the condo board and uh, there will be there will be a system there that will be in charge of doing all the maintenance that's required in those condo docs, and that's generally it ends up being you know kind of its own little its own little government and they. And someone usually takes charge and makes sure everything is done. I know I, I live in a condo complex myself, and it's they're pretty stringent. So uh, that's those documents are being uh, written up now. Uh, Jim Mundy of uh, Clark and Howell is is doing that for uh, for the applicant, and we had a discussion just this morning. Uh, and although the final condo docs do not need to be uh, you know presented and approved by the planning board, uh, we will have a draft of them for the final. 
and then those will need to be uh, reviewed and approved by by the town attorney and Irish and, and Dave will also be and Lee J will be will be going through those to make sure they uh, they're hitting all the points that we need to that we need to meet and I think that's that's really the only the only way we can actively address bamboo not uh, you know as an invasive species getting off the lot is just to uh, keep the maintenance up of of the final landscaped area as is um, if the board is to make condition that all bamboo bamboo will be removed from site and not stockpiled something like that I think that's you know a condition that would be would, would you guys be amenable to that that would be fine yeah it'd be just a no, just construction an easy fix I already wrote that down yeah. okay that's an easy one. Right. Um, site, so you'll have an opportunity in the second public comment, sir. Thank you very much, sir. Yes, sir. <laughs> Are we doing another public comment, or? Uh, there, there's a. There, there will be another okay. public yes. comment, not a public hearing, but there will be That's a public right. comment okay. at the end of the meeting. All right. Um, and then lot one will be a single-family residence, and currently that's that's the only thing that that can be uh, that that's sized for uh, at the moment. Um, so that's unless zoning changes uh, that's what that's going to have to remain as um, so that I'm not sure if, if that's just inherently inherently met or if there's any any restrictions you wanted to see on there um, additional traffic on Pine Hill Road at that bend um, that is something I did I did go out and speak with um, with Jody uh, from Public Works to go out and take a look at it, and he said the location it's at is is actually better for visibility there. Uh, and he said that any any issues that arise would be from the speed of the users of of Pine Hill Road. He admits that that's the speed is an issue there, but he's not. It's not necessarily the uh, you know the location of this would would be detrimental to to the overall safety of the road. Uh, so I, I basically just had him summarize that in an email and that's that's that was the, the review I got from him um, the 30 foot wide utility easement uh, running along the rock wall uh, tend to dig 15 from feet from the rock wall uh, and to make sure the rock wall self trees are not damaged or destroyed and that is um, any of those trees that are that are within uh, what is it, 10 feet of that wall will have to be maintained uh, and the wall itself will not be touched we won't be able to get close enough to that wall uh, to damage it we have to stay a minimum of 10 feet off off the line there so we'll have 10 feet and then 10 feet to you know the water and then 10 feet to the other side of the of the uh, of the easement so every every utility has its own you know, has its own section that it has to stay in um, Sufficient uh, conifer deciduous trees between the Backings patios area and 160 Pine Hill for privacy. Uh, trees eaten or uh, die eaten by wildlife, they will be replaced. Generally, that will be included in uh, the condo docks as well. They they want to make sure all the landscaping is stays you know up to snuff and, and everything looks good out there so that it doesn't impact the values for all the other condos. Because in the end, these are these are 10, 10 homes, and if one person's being negligent and not maintaining their landscaping behind their unit, it reflects poorly on all of them. So, they generally, that'll be something that's handled by you know <coughs> the condo board, and they will uh, be in charge of maintaining everything and hiring whoever needs to be uh, to be involved to make sure everything stays as it was intended. Uh, as far as the density and 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 species there, uh, we're open to uh, whatever suggestions anyone if anyone is uh, wants a more you know. Uh, more dense planting scheme there. Uh, we developer would be open to it. We're trying to keep it uh, somewhat open, just to maintain uh, some open space behind those units. Um, the those units are, are the ones that have you know kind of the better lawn area. So we're trying to trying to maintain that. But if if somebody would rather see you know a line of 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 uh, <coughs> shade trees or arborvitaes, I know they're not most popular. But if they wanted privacy trees, those are generally uh, generally the densest uh, thing you can get out there. Uh, so we're open again, open to any suggestions or requests for plantings out there uh, that the board has. So. Uh, extend the rock wall or install fence in the area where it's missing uh, in the provided you know, missing to be to provide boundary 
This one from the end of lot two and lot three. And I'm assuming that's Okay. It's this portion through here uh, and that I, I'm not sure that that for this project that would be something we'd be uh, we'd be involved with here it's really out in the undeveloped the undeveloped portion uh, and I don't think I don't think it'd be required for for additional fencing to go out there Post parking lot, uh, minimal lighting at night, uh, and it is um, it's it's intended to be you know uh, as minimal lighting as, as we can have and, and maintain a safe area. Uh, so it's it's not intended to be a fully lit commercial a commercial space. It's more just for you know as little visibility as you know you need and not be um, being creating a light spillage on any other lots or or uh, being a nuisance to even the you know the units that are right next to that parking lot. So I think that's. I think that's addressed with the plan. Um, the wetland area just below parking lot. Um, no restriction on water flow path from 160 Pine Hill. And that is, I guess that one's also inherently uh, taken care of with the plan. We, we did keep that, um, that wetland completely uh, open and unobstructed. Uh, we're not proposing any wetland impacts on this. We don't want to get into the wetland uh, at all. We try to avoid it whenever we can. Uh, and try and maintain that natural resource. And so that filter that we have there, if anything, uh, water, if it hits the, the berm of the filter, would, would be directed back into that wetland. Uh, and the water coming off the parking lot is actually going to be treated by that filter. So we have, you know, we have a, uh, a effluent that's coming out of that, that filter that's going to be, you know, as close to natural runoff as, as we can get. So. Uh, stone markers to be put on, on lot boundaries. Um, I'm not sure if that's a standard condition of approval in Berwick or not. I couldn't remember, but I, it's that's something. If if it's if it's made a condition, uh, the applicant I think would be agreeable to that because we really only have uh, only have five, six, seven, I think seven boundaries. So I I think if it is made a condition, we'd be agreeable to that one. Um, Cannot change use area of lot two beyond proposed uh, parking lots and buildings up to lot three, and that is that is correct. That's kind of what I went over at the beginning. Uh, what's shown on here is is what would have to be built with this application. Uh, any changes to this would have to scrap that entire thing and come in with a whole new application to do something else. So what's what's shown here is is all we propose and all that could be built with this application. So there is no future plans for developing any of that correct yep it's 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 impossible the way um, the way the zoning and the density is that we couldn't get anything more out there even if even if they wanted to try so uh, okay we'll go into the next the next group I think that takes care of those um, and the dumpster uh, in that back parking lot and that was intended uh, we were showing a dumpster here uh, with uh, recycling and, and uh, just a a small residential dumpster on that side that was that was put in there because we had the space to to do that and accommodate that um, and also we wanted to show it so we'd have the ability to if in the future that had to be put in it was you know it was shown on here and everyone knew that it was going in if it comes to it and the developer realizes that it's not necessary to have that dumpster there it may go away and it may just be everyone takes their you know takes their their trash in and out like like a normal household um, but I did want to leave a space and show that we are accommodating for it if need be if it has to be put in there that's another thing that we'll be discussing as he goes through the the condo docs because that's gonna be something that's gonna be regulated by that um, and the bedrooms and that was after I spoke with the applicant and discussed it with him um, he did say he wanted to make sure that we'd be able to get three bedroom units in there uh, because his floor plans would accommodate uh, you know a small third bedroom so he wanted to have the opportunity to do that um, so I just said okay we're going to be doing all three bedrooms just to make sure it was accommodated for when I was doing the the values for uh, for traffic and things like that it doesn't affect the the actual traffic numbers but it affects how many 
you know, prospective students would be going to the school system, things like that. So I accounted for that in the, in the, latest, uh, the latest documentation that we put in. Um, there's going to be a road put into cemetery. Nope, there's no, no uh, changes to cemetery road or entrances to cemetery road are proposed except for the two driveways that will be put in whenever those, uh, whenever those lots are developed by, by whoever buys those. Um, so do you, you're going to answer the time public hearing issue. I think you took that, that covered. So um, the snow storage area on site is um, yep, uh, is going to be. We have this area that we widened out uh, at the entrance. Instead of coming straight down, we widened this out so we could get snow storage on this side of uh, this lower building, as well as uh, pulled out to here uh, that's going to be up on, uh, it's, it's a, another super elevated portion that we're going to have. Uh, that's where going to be the majority of the snow coming down the road is. We pushed onto this bank here. And as that melts, it's intended to, to be melted down and get back into this uh, you know, our system to catch it and, and bring it back out to the level spreader and not dump it straight into the wetland uh, to, try and, uh, to try and treat it as much as possible before it gets into the resource there. And then, of course, the, the snow would be uh, pushed to the back of the, uh, of the parking lot through here. Do you guys have any engineered calculations for snow melt and, and capacity that you'll be able to handle? No, it's, uh, we generally don't do that. What we do is we'll, we'll do the, the stormwater uh, management plan, and that generates, you know, we, we have to take a storm into account that uh, has you know, 5.2 inches of rain in 24 hours, and that's generally accepted as um, uh, an acceptable, yeah, an acceptable you know, uh, placeholder for a degree days of snow melting uh, that we'd see around here. So. Um, the school capacity, and that was, that's um, that's something that civil consultants, as uh, you know, an engineer and developers and the school system have all have all had a hard time trying to trying to justify. And basically, it came down to the fact that the only real way to to work that into regulations is to limit the number of building permits. And so that's because you can have you can have you know 15 houses out there, and one year they have. 20, you know, 20 residents in them, and the next year they have 30 because everybody has twins, and it's a hard thing to it's a hard thing to to quantify. So I had been working with Audra to try and come up with something, and and uh, that was actually I that wasn't my suggestion. Uh, I'd kind of fallen out of the out of the loop on that one for a little while, and she just emailed me and said, "We're not going to do the letters per se, but we're going to provide them where we're at every time, you know." every every uh, half year so I, I think we have some statistical yeah. data that we can provide this evening that, mm -hmm. that may put that to rest as well. gotcha okay yep. um, and then the bamboo creep I think we uh, addressed that previously um, and the easement uh, the easement area is that included in any of the developable land and the answer is no we have to take any of the easement area that's going to handle those uh, the sewer and water lines. So that 30-foot strip that runs all the way down the property, it's like he doesn't even, you know, he doesn't own it in the eyes of the density he can develop. So if you, um, in on the plan, we do note that on the, uh, on our plans here, we we give it the gross area, and then we have the utility easement, the wetland, and uh, we deduct those, and we get the the net area that we can use to develop, and that's how we determine how many how many units we can get on that lot. So. And once that easement is approved and, and recorded, then it's no longer a developable area, and it has to stay out of uh, out of any kind of density calculations you do on the property. So, unless I missed any, I may have. I, don't I think, think that covers everything that was brought up. I did. Go ahead. Please. I don't think you missed it, but I think in in your eyes, I think John. Lot one, single family unit as it is right now. I think he missed what you were saying. It cannot be more than a single family unit moving forward unless the town changes the zoning. So I think that answered. Okay. I'm going to turn it over to Lee Yeah. Thank you, sir. Thank you.
Uh, Lee J, do you have anything to add, sir? Um, actually, I do, and I was just looking for something on another part of my computer, and I'll jump back to it just to um, kind of give you an idea of stuff. Um, I did have some, based on the conversation tonight, um, I did have some thoughts on additional conditions of approval for you. Um, I believe you have some in front of you from my um, previous memo, which was just done last week. Um, but based on tonight, um, let me offer these up and then I can, I can formalize them tomorrow and send them down to, to Dave if you choose to use them. Um, number one is that just as, a con just as a condition for the plan would be that the rock wall shall never, never be removed or altered. You know, if that shows up on the plan as a condition, then it's pretty much fait accompli that that is stated that way. Um, during construction, uh, all material shall be contained on site to eliminate potential spread of invasive species. Um, trash receptacle. Um, I know Neil is kind of saying there may not be one, but I think if there is one, it would be a, um, a placeholder to, to protect um, folks. But trash receptacles shall be emptied during the hours of 7 a.m. and 6 p.m., I know the, sometimes those trash trucks will show up at two or three o'clock in the morning and clank and bang. And if you, if the um, condo association or the developer at the time contracts with someone, you know, they can tell them you need to be here between these times. It's a requirement of the, of the uh, uh, town. Um, under the monumentation issue, I, I do have that in front of me from the subdivision requirements. Uh, and a note or a condition could be that monuments shall meet the standards of Article 12, Section 12.8 of the subdivision regulations. And just as a, a note for you on that, um, it states um, stone or precast concrete monuments shall be set at all street intersections and points of curvature, but no further than 750 feet apart along street lines. That's if you're going to have an accepted street, which you're not here. B, stone or precast concrete monuments shall be set at all corners and angle points of the subdivision boundaries where the interior angle of the subdivision boundary is 135 degrees or less. Stone or concrete monuments shall be a minimum of four inch square at the top and three feet in length and set in the ground at final grade level. Um, after they are set, drill holes half inch deep shall locate the point or points described above. And then all other subdivision boundary corners and angle points, as well as all lot boundary corners and angle points shall be marked by suitable monumentation as required by the main board of registration of land surveyors. Certification that all lot boundary monuments have been placed shall be presented to the code enforcement officer prior to the issuance of any building permits. And I think the last one really covers it because the state land surveyors do have certain minimum requirements. And so everything else does require stone or concrete. And then the last one is any other locations need to meet the state requirements that the um, surveyors have established. So I think there's a, quite a bit of safeguards in that for, for the folks that were concerned. Um, the other thing was what I was looking at, hold on a sec, I gotta switch between screens here, I apologize. Um, we, as you may know, um, have been working with the town on the comprehensive plan update. And one of the things that's of interest regarding um, school age children, if you will, it doesn't directly say that, but the average household size in the state, and I don't know if we have, oh, we do have your number. So the average household size in the state has decreased from 2.9 people per household in 2000 to 2.29 in 2020. And so it reflects the preferences for smaller families uh, and more people living alone um, is what's occurring statewide. And in Berwick, um, the number is 2.36. So that has followed the same trend as the state and a decrease in the number of people that are living in a home. Now that doesn't um, indicate how many school age children and I'm looking under the documentation. I don't think we actually 
um, have stated that, but I think it's fair to say, and we have so, we have found it everywhere that that we've been working on these things that. Um, even the number of school-aged children in the schools is declining steadily. So uh, I know that's not a safeguard. I know it doesn't say you know that um, you have to that that you're going to meet the 20 percent, but it's it's a fair deduction that population sizes are decreasing for families, and the number of school-aged children is also decreasing across the board. Uh, with that, I'll turn it back to you and. Um, answer any questions you may have or whatever other assistance you may need of me. Thank you, Lee Jay. Uh, Mr. Andreessen, do you, would you care to speak to the, uh, the statistics that you were able to find on the school? Yeah, and I passed this out to everybody, uh, the abutters as well. 1975, there were nine, 955, that's how many kids from Borough attended the schools. At the most, in the last uh, 50 years, there was 1,394 students in 20, uh, 2002. Um, and now, we currently have 1,328 students from Berwick attending SAD 60. And those are according to the SAD 60 numbers. Um, and I also, yeah, so it's a little bit of a decrease by about uh, 70, people, 70, 70 students in the last 20 years, but the number has gone down. <clears throat> now, I first moved to Berwick in 2001, like a lot of people, and then the economy in 2008 really went to a nosedive and you can see by these numbers that is slowly starting to uh, make a comeback but these are the numbers according to SAD 60. <clears throat> Thank you Dave. All right uh, we want to go to the next piece of old business, the land use ordinance, and then we can make our motions, or should we make our motions now? I think you need to talk to Lee Jay and find out about what you can approve tonight. Okay. With with this application. Okay, Lee Jay. Uh, so we are at a point where I would like to recommend some conditions of approval based on what what you had recommended and and a few that we here at the table have come up with as well. Is this the prudent time to do that? Um. It, I think you should certainly discuss it. Um, what I'd suggest is if you can get those to David, um, even if they're hand done and you've got them in front of you, um, and then he can get them to me and I can I can write it up uh, so he can drop them back into the findings of fact for you because you're, you, you won't be um, approving any findings of fact this evening anyway. So um, we can just put it all together so that everything makes common sense and David can drop them into the findings of fact for your next meeting. Is it reasonable to discuss with the developer if they're amenable to, to those conditions so we're not wasting administrative effort? So, sure. Um, I, I, I'm, I'm just kind of smiling a little bit. I apologize. Um, no, no it worries. Does, I'm it, probably showing my own it doesn't, I, it doesn't, how naive I am to the process, sir. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't really matter if they're okay. amenable to the uh, developer or not. Um, okay. If the board feels that there's something that needs to be included as a condition of approval, then you can require that of the developer. Okay. Yes, sir. Okay. <clears throat> Go ahead. You have some... Uh... Um, I would like to see any trash receptacle, like a dumpster that's placed on the property, fenced in. Definitely fenced in. In the closure? Yeah. <clears throat> I think that's required. Do you want to take a list, Dave, yeah. of proposed conditions? I, I'm taking a list via the, uh, the, 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 the recording. Right. Okay, yes. understood. And and Lee Jay's taking a list as well. Okay, excellent. Let's see. Anything else? That's, that's for me. That's, that's all for me. Okay. Uh, I agree with the conditions as proposed by Lee Jay uh, as they pertain to the rock wall. Uh, 
containment on site, uh, is, is it within our purview and is it legal for us to ask the developer to eradicate the, the existing bamboo legion? Is that something that, is that legal? Or is that yes. a slow? Slope? Yes, um, as, you know, as long as it's um, on their property and, and not on a butter's property because then they'd need to obtain right. easements or permission. But on their property, um, you can certainly um, request that they eradicate the bamboo during construction period. Yeah. Okay. Excellent. Uh, dumpster service was already addressed uh, and an enclosure. I would I would also uh, ask that. Uh, the monuments uh, as a condition of approval for the marking. I think that would answer the mail on that as well. Yeah. Uh, what else did we have? Uh, the buffer for uh, along the property line, privacy trees or uh, the other species that he had recommended. Uh, that's probably a discussion point, but I think that should be a condition of approval as well. Anything to add? I just got a question on what was mentioned about what's being done to keep the water from going down onto their property. Mm -hmm. If they find out after the fact that, that what they have done has not stopped that, is there a process of helping them out to get that rectified? Can that be a condition or how does that get addressed? Yes, there could be a condition. You know what I'm saying? In other words, yeah, I know what you're saying. if they're doing everything they can that they know, but that's not enough and they don't know that until it's actually done. It, so. it could be, it could very well be a condition. Okay. okay. So oh, the way I, the way I would um, suggest doing that, David is correct. Uh, yep. It could be a condition of the approval. The applicant is going to be required to um, put a some sort of surety in place, letter of credit, bond, um, and that's going to be a, include a defect bond that would be for a probably a year after the final construction. And that's to make sure that the plants don't die and, and that sort of thing. So that would also be covered under um, under that that part of the bond so that if once it's completed and we have a, a rainstorm and we find out that there's an issue going on out there, um, that money is available to, to correct uh, any deficiencies in the site. And Neil, you, you said that you were already going to do that, correct? Correct, yeah. No, we have uh, we've approached the developer. We've put together an a, a, a estimate for the construction to, so that he has an appropriate, uh, an appropriate amount in a bond uh, for, you know, instances such as that. Uh, so that's that will all have to be reviewed uh, by Lee J and uh, in planning and that will have to go through there before they'll accept that bond performance guarantee uh, before they can start construction. Okay. So we're not looking for a motion on this tonight, correct, Dave? Eh? The Lee J. We I would hold off and let us get everything compiled and the, and the okay. findings of fact and everything, and you could um, act on it uh, at your next meeting. Okay. Thank you, Lee J. Appreciate that guidance. Welcome. All right. Thank you, sir. Thank you. All right. Uh, next item on old business is revision of land use ordinance and subdivision regulations with uh, Christy Rabaska. Is Christy on? I am. Hi, hi Christy. Good evening, everyone. Thank you for having me back. So, we're, I'm sorry, Christy. Let me just introduce, uh, let me just say what, this, this is going to be a change to our land use ordinance. This is going to have to get up to the selectmen. So if you guys approve this tonight, which I'm hoping it's tonight, um, I'm going to have to present this to the selectmen. And this is going to have to get voted on at the June election and incorporated. So what Christy's going to do is she's going to explain it to you guys what 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 is going to be changed in the land use ordinance. So Christy, great, um, thanks. I'm going to go ahead and bring up the document. So I um, and after we'll talk if we could just talk briefly about process because I think my understanding from the last meeting was that this would need a planning board hearing first, and then it would go to the select board. Is that correct? That's correct. Okay. So tonight would be um, if you approve the changes that I've made since our last meeting in December, then it would go to planning board hearing. I think that would be the. Correct. The next meeting. Yeah. Okay. Great. 
So I'm going to bring up the um, letter that um, I provided to uh, Dave in January. Um, just make sure everyone can see that and that it's large enough for you all. Look good? Great. Is it legible or does it need to yeah, be? I, I can see it good. We have hard yeah. copies as well. So. Fine. Okay, great. Thank you. So yes, I was uh, before the planning board on December 1st and gave you an overview of these requirements. These are uh, requirements from the town's uh, general permit for stormwater discharges from municipal separate storm sewer systems. Your stormwater permit requires changes to incorporate standards for erosion and sedimentation control and also to require more timely maintenance of private stormwater systems, such as the system that will be installed at the development that you just reviewed, as well as other developments in town, and also uh, require a more timely removal of anything that is illegally dumped into the storm drain system. So those are the three sets of changes that we reviewed on December 1st. We went through the 19 page document very carefully on December 1st. And um, I provided uh, basically, I have six uh, points that I thought I would just review with you. The first two uh, did, are not resulting in uh, changes to the proposal to this 19 page document, but I just wanted to remind you the erosion and sedimentation control changes will apply town wide. Um, as do other requirements for the MS, well, the MS4 permit, the, the town has voluntarily implemented the requirements um, throughout uh, the town rather than just the urbanized area. So these ESC, erosion sedimentation control, they'll, they'll also be the same town-wide. Um, and that um, you guys also discussed that um, the way I had written it, uh, allowing certifications for the um, erosion sedimentation control um, by a couple of different uh, qualifications that are a little more lenient than the chapter 500 standards. Um, so we, you're gonna allow these extra certifications in town, the EnviroCert and the main DEP certification program. Um, so no changes to the attachment uh, based <coughs> on that. Um, these qual a qualified professional doesn't need to do an erosion sedimentation control plan for sites that are smaller than an acre of disturbance that is only going to apply for larger than an acre. So those are just kind of reminders of how we had it written in December and you agreed to those changes. Um, so the, the next three items that I have here, so item three, four, five, and six, these were elements that during your discussions you had requested changes made. So I was just going to review those with you briefly. Um, item three was a requirement um, to update the definition of the qualified post-construction stormwater inspector. So one of the discussion items was that this inspector needs to not only have some qualifications, but you also wanted to restrict, um, include the restriction that the inspector not have any like right title or interest. And so Page 17 of the document has that additional language, which we have used in other municipalities. Um, so that, um, I'll show you that in just a second, but also there are were a few subsequent pages I had to make changes to because of that request. It was just, we have Appendix 1, which is a maintenance agreement that everyone signs, and Appendix 2, which is the annual certification that they actually submit so I just had to make changes to that to not allow an owner of a property to, you know, do their own annual inspection and say, yes, my property looks fine. So I made all those changes. So that's four and five. And if you'd like, I could uh, zoom to those pages, uh, basically 14 to 17 are where those changes were. Are you good? Yeah. Hopefully everybody read it. So yeah, I did make those changes. Um, any questions on those or? Comments about how they were written. The only, only question I had, and I, maybe I missed it because I, I know I missed a meeting, but I know we did discuss the possibility of uh, an, an urbanized area standard and a different standard for more rural 
agricultural type areas. And I, I don't know if we got away from that for a reason, but I, I lost track of the discussion. So I don't know if somebody can refresh my memory or if we, or if we just don't want to go down that road. Christine, do you want to speak to that or you want me to fill them in? Um, if you can fill them in, I, I did, I was not aware that that was the preference. Um, at this last meeting we were at, yeah. that I was, that I attended when we discussed this, um, it generally speaking is just easier to apply it for the entire, because I got you. Okay. I'm the enforcer yep. for this, the okay. feet on the ground, yep. rather than having to determine which set of standards, if it applies town-wide, it's just easier. That makes sense. So a, a little more work, but ease of use. Okay. Balances. Fair enough. Uh, additionally, uh, sorry, my brain kicked into gear. Additionally, <laughs> the the standards that we're adopting are the state standards, which apply at the same threshold that we're adopting them. So anybody that disturbs one or more acres of land, whether they're inside or outside our urbanized area, they already have to comply with these okay. same standards. So that's, yeah, it didn't make that's sense. What, that's what it was. It, thank you for refreshing my memory. Yes. <laughs> I appreciate it. That too. Yes. And then Irish chimed in that it's easier administratively for okay. everyone. All yeah. right. All right. So that's good. Um, and uh, any other questions on those? No. No. Okay. So then for item five here um, on the non-stormwater discharges, the general permit required that we get any, you know, illicit connections corrected within 60 days. You guys wanted to see that reduced to 30 days. Correct. So I've made that change. Um, and that is on page uh, 17 of the document. I got that page number right. I might not have gotten these page numbers right. Oh, yeah. The other pages post-construction was uh, page 11. So these are paid. This one's on page 17. Um, and then um, you also wanted to allow the code enforcement officer to be able to shorten that time even more for both um, repairs to a stormwater maintenance system for post-construction or whether it was, you know, dumping or discharging or connections into the storm drain system. So you want the code officer, if it needs to get done quicker, you want the code officer to be able to say, you know, you need to cease and desist now, or you only get one week to correct this. Or so we've built that language into both of those sections, seven point two two and seven point two three. So, any questions about those changes? Um, and then the last thing that you had asked me about, we discussed this both um, at the. December 1st meeting, as well as an earlier meeting where we discussed these erosion sedimentation control. I cannot remember which of you had asked me about this, but you were um, concerned about um, and, and interested in the concept of applying the, you know, more stringent erosion and sedimentation control standards when developments are in or adjacent to the natural resources. And you wanted to see if there was an opportunity to, to make things a little more stringent um, and be even more protective of natural resources. So yeah, I- That was for any feeders that, that go directly into the Salmon Falls River. I think that's what we had discussed is, is to be maybe more stringent in those areas. And is there a provision for doing that? Yeah, so um, just for the Salmon Falls River, I would have to adjust the language that I have proposed for you, um, which begins on page 18. And I will turn to that if I can and walk you through those. But I I had lighted in, I, again, I had a light bulb <laughs> go on after New Year's. And on page 18, uh, if you guys want to zip to that also. Page 18. Page 18, I thought, well, we we do have um, the shoreland zoning requirements and the shoreland zoning standards apply um, within 250 feet of any um, the high water line of any great pond or river, Salmon Falls River, um, within an upland edge of a freshwater wetland or within any land that's within 75 feet of a, a normal high water line of a stream. Um, and so um, I lighted in on shoreland zoning and I thought, well, that 
right now the language for erosion and sedimentation control for shoreland zoning is pretty light. It's down here. So again, you'll see the redland strikeout. Um, it just had said before that you have to do erosion and sedimentation control in accordance with the DEP guidelines. And you had a couple of other standards here. And I thought if you wanted to be more protective, um, that you could require an, a formalized, you know, written erosion and sedimentation control plan prepared by a qualified ESC person. And, um, and that that ESC plan would have to be in accordance with um, the chapter 500 A, B, and C, because it's not right now. And that would be regardless of how much disturbance. So the difference would be, this would be, you know, basically any disturbance you'd want a qualified person to design that plan. I think we'd be missing the point of just being good stewards to our, our community and our environment if we didn't do that. That's correct. Um, and so I don't know how the rest of the board feels about it, but I, I think being a little more restrictive uh, on the waterway areas is is critical, but I, I don't want to speak for the whole board. I just want to make sure you guys are in agreement with that before we go down that road. Yeah, I, I agree with you that uh, it's it's better to be more restrictive uh, and look at each one of these on a case by case basis uh, as, as they come before the board. Correct. Okay. Yeah, I think we would like to adopt that that verbiage in the uh, in the new document. That's our drinking. Okay. Water. Is Lee J still on? Uh, no, I believe he 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 left. Okay. Yeah, great. I I think that's good. So not just for the salmon fault to clarify, that would not be just for the salmon falls river, but that would be for any river streams, any anything that triggers the shoreland zoning. It's co correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I like that terminology better anyway. Okay. okay. Yeah. I thought that was a good so, place for that. Dave, are we so, looking for a motion this evening? No. To, so no? okay. What you need to do. You, you can, yeah, you can approve this change tonight, um, but we want to schedule a public hearing first. So okay. I suggest that we schedule a public hearing for the first meeting of February. Okay. And then we can have Christy come back if you want, um, mm -hmm. and then you guys will vote on it. Uh, what Christy's going to do within the next couple weeks is she's just going to make the changes that you guys had asked for. And I will have fresh copies for all six of you, um, and we can go off. We can go off of that. Schedule a public hearing. Close the public hearing, and then you guys can vote on that. And then I got to get that to the selectmen. I got to present it to the selectmen probably um, by the end of February, because it's going to be Part that's the that's the hour. deadline that yeah. we're looking at to have the voters vote on it by June. Okay. Does that work for you, Christy? It does, but I didn't hear any changes from tonight's uh, letter. Like the the letter that I wrote on January third, it sounds like the language is is good the way it is. Okay, right. So no yeah. changes to be made. So you can use this if, if the waterways piece is in there. That, that, it is. That, it is. Okay. It's on. Excellent. It's it's right. It's in here. I wrote it up. Okay. Right here. So I figured, what, I figured you'd want to see it in black and white. So what Christy and I are going to do is uh, next week she's going to send me the the copy that that you guys are going to hopefully approve the first meeting of February and have the public hearing on it. So she's going to send it to me. I will have six copies for everybody. We'll vote on it and um, go from there. Mr. Bradley, I got a question. I don't know if it's for code enforcement or if it's for Christie, but in section 12.4 where it says impact on water quality or shorelands, it appears it was reduced from 100 feet to 75 feet. We d we discussed that on the last meeting to be more to be more restrictive, I think. What? Or did it? Or no? Well, it says 75. I thought we were at 100. I don't have a copy in front of me. Christy, are you? I'm not sure what you're referring to. The Are you referring to the letter I wrote or your own ordinance? 
it's in the ordinance at section 12.4. It says impact on water quality or shoreline. What does yours say? With an extra 12.4? Yeah. So 12 is. 12.4. Um, So this is your land use ordinance and article 12 is how to do amendments. <laughs> I've got three different documents. There's three different documents. Okay. Okay. So is it, was it in subdivisions or, or I mean, cause shoreland zoning is, is article 14. And it says 75 feet. And it does, it's, this is pretty standard. Yeah. Okay. Got a little bigger for you. That is the state standard, correct? Yes. Yes. Okay. okay. Seventy-five feet state standard. Yeah. Right. Wait. I thought it was one hundred and twenty-four. Right. Seventy. Yeah. No. Seventy-five oh, and two fifty. Oh. It should be one hundred. What the ordinance says. Town ordinance says one hundred. We'll look at it. I just want to make sure we're, we don't have conflicting documents because it's going to create a headache for you guys. So yeah, we'll probably update our local documents as, as well. We would ask. Christy is going to send me what we're going to be voting on. Okay. And you'll yeah. get. Okay. So take take the copies that you have yeah. and just write, do me a favor, draft. write draft on them. <laughs> okay. Uh, yeah. Write draft on them so you'll realize that um, that's not the official document. You will get the official document via email, and I'll have a hard copy for you next meeting. Okay. All right. This was based on a June June fourteenth, yes, twenty twenty two. Okay, yeah. that's what this is the one I pulled off the website. So, okay, I think I have the right one, and I don't see a hundred. So. Yeah. So the reason five. the reason I'm bringing that up, my wife and I are on the comp plan. So this is being discussed there. So that's why this seems different. So okay. Maybe the, the comp plan says to change it to 100, right? Well, I think it was 100. Good point. We'll look at it. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right. I'll let, I'll let you go. We'll get it. We'll get it straightened out. Yeah. Great. Thank you, Christy, for your time and Thank your you. expertise. We appreciate it very much. No worries. Thank you for your time. Yes, Christy. What, you. Did you have something for me? I'll send you a, an updated document um, next next week. Okay, I'll thank you so much. The word mm -hmm. Thanks. Okay. Have a nice night. Thank you. You, well. you too. Okay, uh, moving on to our next agenda item. Any new business? Nothing. Nothing for you guys. Okay, uh, and we will open up the second public comment. I have to. No. Okay. All right. So anybody who would like to come up. Greg Keisker, 160 Pine Hill Road. I can ask a quick question about what we talked about first or no? Uh, in trying to do right procedure, you... <laughs> go, go ahead, sir. You guys said the bamboo on the condo area. The bamboo that I'm aware of, it falls by an old building that, if you look at the lines, I don't have the drawing anymore, the gentleman. You guys have to stop me from asking, but it, it falls on the line between the existing house and where these uh, condos are going to be built. Okay. So I, I, the realty company owns a whole piece right now, so I was just trying to deal with it now. Yes, and sir. if they, if you feel they should have someone of knowledge walk the property, I that even make me feel better. But okay. you know, I'm not. I don't believe there's any more anywhere else. I knew the lady really well, at, but that she died eight or ten years ago, and I don't know how it travels, you know what I mean? But Absolutely. the gentleman that's there now has cut around that area and kept it, it very conscious, and I, I don't think it's a huge area, but it does Im involve both of those soon-to-be-divided, which would be a property line, and, and that was it. The other so thing, I, if it gives you any measure of comfort, sir, I think it's our intent to, to make it a condition of approval that they try to eradicate the bamboo that's there. So Mr. Given, Chair? Yes, sir. Just real quick, we don't have the applicant here. It's still an open application. Uh, understood. Okay. 
So, so I, we will do our due diligence to, to ensure that, and, and I would offer this, if, if nothing was done, if the land wasn't developed at all, you'd have no assurance that the bamboo wouldn't spread. So I think you're in a better bargaining point working with the developer. That's just an opinion. Uh, yes, and uh, it, you know, from what I understand from reading American Society of Bam Bamboo and uh, actually uh, I know people that work for attorneys and when, when it became an issue the first, you know, the first time people brought it up I realized it was there and they said be careful that comes across. Um, uh, I would have to go after the person who owned, owned the home. And, and they are liable, in almost all cases have been found that way in our court so far. The precedence is there, according to both of those American Society and Boo and uh, legal counsel. So you do have someone to go after. You know the damages, the accept, all that. Uh, you know, that's a, the only lawyers make money. But uh, the other thing was you were talking about the schools and seventy people less. But how many? Uh, since whatever it was, 2002 or whatever, how many more permits are we now offering than we have in the last three or four or five years? I mean, uh, and in a two point, I believe it was eight or whatever, eight something uh, in Berwick, a little higher than the state average, you know, because we have good schools and, and we have good people and we brought people here for a lot of reasons, close to the border, a lot of different things. We all know them, we all live them. So, uh, uh, anyway. You know, I, I appreciate the information. It's really enlightening, and especially after we just talked about it a couple of weeks ago. But uh, I'd love to hear that end of it. You know, also, I, I and, think uh, if you if you go back and you watch previous, um, it, she has the study, which we'll get to in a moment. But if you look at um, previous meetings, it, it, our town is is seeing an influx of of development, um, and and that comes with pros and cons. But I think one one point that our board has always taken into consideration and and the question is asked with every new development how does this affect our services i.e. our municipality our firefighters our police department and the school system and that is always at the forefront of our mind because it, it's our responsibility to to ensure that we have the resources to support the growth of our of our small town and it, so it is something that that we take very seriously so i would encourage you to please you know that this comes up every time there's a new subdivision, sure. we get it, but it is something that's in the forefront of our mind, and we do not want to exceed the capacity of our resources in the town. And, and I think you're totally genuine with what you're yes, saying, sir. And uh, but I also believe that whoever cut the thing where every six months will kind of visit it, and we can just have a quick phone call, and there's no numbers behind it, and come on, you know, we all know our sewer capacity is huge, but when Prime left, Concrete and metal don't sit empty well. So you may say that we have this much sewer, but how much of it is actually active and doesn't need large service and maintenance? Things like that really add up. And people yes, that live here and lived here for a long time and do construction understand that, you know, when we lost Prime, we lost, what, about three-quarters of the sewer department sat empty, and concrete and metal don't sit well empty, but it still looks like we have the capacity. Because we, you know, you could rebuild it, its own, but it's not necessarily all you. And those things are why each time one of these subdivisions may, you know, come in front of us, that it is important that we attach a real number and, and we make the sewer department and the water department responsible for that real number. Because we all struggled with water last year and now we're adding more. You know, on that water thing, and we and we pump it from a live river, so we have to kill it. It's not coming out of a well up by the tower. It's you know, or several yes, wells. It's coming from something living that, you know, affects other things like that also. And uh, yeah, those are you know why I thought it was neat that it said that we re need a real number, and then being involved in this for the first time. Uh, was kind of surprised that people have just set it aside, and there is no real number, and we don't actually have a, a, a number at the end of six months of what it cost us and what burden it did put on our fire, or and don't, and they're volunteer, just like you gentlemen, you know what I mean? And we all know the loss and, uh, is very happens way too much and, and, and stuff, and we put it on them so. Yeah, anyway, not to get all that. But. Oh, well, thank you for bringing the important issues to light, sir. I, I sincerely appreciate it. Hey, and, uh, I appreciate it.
Thank you. <laughs> yes, sir. Our census contributes to infrastructure, so Correct. that's why it's important that we count every 10 years. Yep. So, yeah. so just wanted to make sure that, Craig, that you're aware that the handout that was sent out around earlier, I think there's a copy on the chair in front of you there. At the first page has the planning board procedures. The second page has the uh, number of students in the school district, which they always have accessible because they always have to know how many kids they have. But the third page in that is actually a number of houses that have been built in that same time period. So believe it or not, the, this one, uh, the photocopy cuts out at uh, 21, but there was only 30 houses built in 2021. So it's um, with the way things are written into our ordinance in regards to only so many permits allowed per subdivision for under certain circumstances. There's a lot of different pieces in our ordinance, um, which I've been reviewing very carefully because of multiple things going on in the town right now. Um, there's a lot that's built in there just that restricts growth naturally through density requirements, through building permit allotments, um, through planning board shifting things through phases and you know developments that are are multi multi houses versus condo units, so it's it's not as bad as it seems. If that makes any you know, it, it's not as bad as it seems. It the town has made some from what I see coming in and reading the ordinance, um, they've made some very good uh, kind of preemptive strikes to prevent overgrowth, and with the changes that they have done to the ordinance, this. Uh, I'm guessing it was 2005 that you were sitting out here waiting for a building permit in line. Um, you won't need to do that now because there won't be so much of this growth like you saw in 2004, 2006, where you're doing almost 100 houses a year. You're not going to see that happening as, as much and as frequently because of the rest of the ordinances. So it's not, it's not as extreme as it sometimes feels. But you do have that a copy of that that you can take home with you, okay? Any other public comment? Okay. Uh, informational items. Any informational items. I don't have any informational items. I know Lee Jay's not here. Um, I just thank you <coughs> tonight. I know that you missed the last meeting. <laughs> this is, uh, but this is a good good meeting. And we're doing everything within regulations. When I was a planning board chair, I was telling Phil, um, I remember every 20 or 30 meetings would be contentious. We'd have a lot of people here, and we'd have to schedule two public hearings, and we'd have to go back to the rules. And those are the rules. So I, I just thank you for tonight. Yeah. I was part of that. Yeah, <laughs> you were. <laughs> You were, Jerry. Yep. Yeah. All right. I got one question. Where where do we stand with the South Berwick project? Um, that is, it's being they're they're going back to the developers. So uh, that is going to be. I'm just going to say, uh, you know, I'm going to be there. And Hannah's going to be there from SMTDC. You guys don't have to come unless you guys are going to vote. Now, here's to clarify but, that because this was a confusing email from it, Hannah. It was confusing. If you don't waive your right to vote, you have to attend all the meetings that right. projects discussed at. Otherwise, if you don't go, then you lose your right to vote. Right. I would suggest that you guys would come to all the meetings and vote on it, I would suggest that you don't waive your right to vote by not showing up. Either way, I'm still going to go because there's going to be not development, but they're going to we're going to have to do something with the road and yeah. security, 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 yeah. surety bond, surety yeah. bond. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think to protect our rights of the people on Berwick, that we should be there. I agree <laughs> to be part of that. So. Yeah. Absolutely, and that's why when Hannah emailed us uh, about that process and how that procedure could go, um, I actually had to email her back and ask for clarification because what she emailed just kind of wasn't 
exceptionally clear in my opinion. So basically, kind of boiled it down to dumb builder speak, which is either we go and we are able to vote or we don't go and we can't vote. Okay. And it has to be the board members. Yeah. I would suggest that you guys, <coughs> I'm not on the board anymore, I, but I would suggest that you guys go and with the minimum of four people, which is a quorum. No. And it's not going to be, it's not going to be <coughs> weeks and weeks and weeks and months of meetings. I it's see. Be two, at the most three meetings. Right. I was going to say two or three more meetings, and that's Correct. it. Correct. Yeah. Well, I'm good with going. Correct. Right. And she will still, Jen will notify Dave, and Dave will still notify you guys the same way he always notifies okay. you. So it'll come through email traffic then. Yes. Those, are, those meetings are taking place. Right. Okay. Because I, I certainly agree with you, Dave, in the fact that I drove that road, I know the road, <coughs> and it needs some serious upgrading mm -hmm. for them to run, um, you know, pe people, residential traffic through a commercial area. It's got to be fixed. Correct. Right. They said it could be up to 350 trips a day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, I don't know. That's all that I have for All right. Yeah. Mr. Chairman. Somebody want to make a motion? I make a motion that we adjourn our meeting. I'll second that. All right. Meeting adjourned. Thank you. He didn't vote on it or anything, but... <laughs> uh, uh, amateur hour. Sorry, Dave. <laughs> That's the one.